What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we are back with a brand new WWE Elite Action Figure. Today, we're back with a brand new WWE Elite Action Figure Build-A-Figure set, and it is the WWE Elite Survivor Series 2023 British Bulldog Build-A-Figure set. Now, this is a set we have seen quite a few times now. I feel like I've had this set in my hands for a while, or at least I feel like I've seen it on the on the wire. You know, that we've, we've seen this for quite some time now. Saw it back at Mania Weekend, and we got to see it at Comic-Con again. We've seen it in plenty of images, and now it is finally upon us. We have the full wave here today, man. We have Kevin Owens, Jerry the King Lawler, Charlotte Flair, and HBK Shawn Michaels here. Kind of a controversial wave, if you will, in some ways, and we're going to, of course, dive into that, but I have a ton of questions regarding some figures in this set, especially one of them, and I'm excited to get into it with you here today, man. If you guys like what you see already, you want to pick up this set, you're interested in this set, where can you purchase this set before we even get started? You can go over to Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, of course. Huge shout out to them as always, but today we are back with a brand new review and I'm excited to get into it with you because we have a Build-A-Figure set and I always enjoy these and we have a lot of new stuff going on here so should be fun man let's go ahead and dive into the set you know overall thoughts I saw a few people saying this is like a banger set and I don't know if I truly feel that way I think I'm going to be able to digress that more as we take each figure out of the packaging but of course we do have my man Kevin Owens and you guys know I love Kevin Owens if you follow the channel in some regard you know I love Kevin Owens having a red shirt version right here looking pretty good mostly a repaint but we do have British Bulldog here 1999 got KO there. Looking pretty damn swell. And this packaging's pretty cool. It's got like some camo designs on it. It's got the red and the blue. It doesn't have the NXT thrown in there anymore, but I mean, it kind of has like a revamp on the standard packaging we're seeing in the main Elite line. We also have Scary Jerry here looking pretty good. He's got his crown in there. I think this works for a really good commentator, Jerry the King Lawler, which we'll see later on, but pretty cool right there with JK. We also have Charlotte here looking pretty standard. We got her black attire. She's got the Women's Championship there looking pretty good. Nice shot of her there on the side as well looking Charlotte with the championship and then we do have schoolboy himself we do have Shawn Michaels got the world title in there looking pretty good lots of things going on here that we're going to discuss nice little handsome CGI shot of Shawn Michaels right there on the front but anyways man we won't know anything about this wave until we crack these guys out of the packaging build our British Bulldog and find out what the hell this set's all about so let's go ahead and dive into it man let's crack these guys out of the packaging and find out what this set is indeed all about Alright guys, so here's our full Survivor Series Elite Wave out of the packaging. You know, I have some concerns about the Wave, but I also like some things about the Wave. But there are some interesting decisions that were made here, which we're going to, of course, dive into. Dive into all the different things about it. And, of course, see where these figures stand. Take the figures one by one. And build our British Bulldog at the end. Take a look at that figure as well. And we're going to rank this set from worst to best, in my own personal opinion, when we get to the end there. Well, let's shut the hell up. We're going to go left to right, of course, on the whole Wave. And let's start things off with my man, Kevin Owens. And then we will continue our way down through the entire Wave. Now, things are very interesting about the Kevin Owens and the fact that this is basically a repaint of his Elite 91 figure. And it's not bad. You know, the Elite 91 was his white wrist tape. So we do have the double jointed arms with the black wrist tape. You get the red shirt in there. It's got the Relentless KO shirt in there in the red. It looks very good. You know, I, I'm still waiting on the day that we get kind of an Ultimate Edition style where it's going to be a claw Velcro-less t-shirt for Kevin Owens. And then, you know, maybe he'll have some interchangeable stuff. But have a regular torso that has good Elite articulation. Like, actually has an ab cut in it. Not the, like, Ultimate edition style that they give Kevin Owens. So have a brand new, like, larger torso that has a good ab crunch with a t-shirt over it. I think that's worth investing in. I also think they give him way too big of arms. You know, I felt like back in the day they gave him too big of arms and then they addressed it, they fixed it, and then they went back to it. And I just think that, like, they're too muscular. They're, they're giving, they give, for some reason, they give guys like Mankind and Kevin Owens who have kind of, they have bigger arms, but they're not cut and, like, thickums like British Bulldog or Ultimate Warrior, right? They're more, you know, they got a little heft to them. They're not as lean, you know? You don't see the veins and stuff popping out. You don't see the freaking triceps and the freaking deltoid head sticking out there. But he's got big arms, you know what I'm saying? The Luke Harper Elite 35 arms were perfect. They just need to make them double jointed. But he does have like the Elite 53 KO shorts in here. Nothing down this panel but you do have the red KO with the white stripes going on right here which is common among KO. And then he does have the black boots, black knee pads, black socks. But you know, it's not the craziest KO ever. You got Just Keep Fighting on the back. He's in his John Cena era, I guess. But his fighting thing's always been a thing. But he does have all his tattoos on here. Pretty sure this is not supposed to have all these gaps, but nonetheless, you know, he's working on those double sleeves over there, but I like this KO attire. I've been waiting on this KO attire, so getting it here is very nice, and I like this figure, man. I love Kevin Owens. One of my favorite wrestlers in the world. Such a specimen. I love Kevin Owens, so I have no quarrels about this figure whatsoever. Now, as far as accessories go, you do get interchangeable hands. You have a pair of mic-holding hands with the black tape, with the black pegs, and then you also get the fisted hands, and his figure right now has one fisted hand and one mic-holding hand, so I didn't bother really taking them out. 
we've seen these so many times, but they do have black pegs, which is nice. And then he also comes with this mini silver Money in the Bank briefcase style thing, but, uh, you know, he doesn't actually... You guys know businessman Kevin Owens is all about his business, all about fighting and business, so he does come with his signature Money in the Bank briefcase style briefcase. And then Kevin Owens also comes with the British Bulldog head sculpt, which looks really damn good. The true effects are really good on here, and it looks just like him, especially from that era. I mean, damn, that's a, that's a damn good football game right there, Brad. So next up on our list is Jerry the King Waller, and this is a solid little Jerry the King Waller figure. He comes with a crown, a jacket, all these different things. I think this works for a pretty good Jerry the King Waller. Like, I like the likeness in there. I think it does resemble the character on my TV. Represents a really good, I would say, like, late 90s, early 2000s Jerry the King Waller for me. You guys can let me know what you think about that, but he does come with a rubber entrance coat, which, you know, I would love to see this in cloth. I think it would stand out a lot better. However, you know, I think if you're just gonna sit him in there and then sit him down at a commentary's desk or something like that, I feel like he could probably get away with it. You know, you're not gonna get any arm bend or anything because these freaking jackets are like a straight jacket. You know, you're not gonna get much out of it, but I still think it could it could do the job serviceably. And if we take his jacket off, I said take it off, Jerry. Jerry, I'm not gonna tell you again, King. But when you remove the jacket on there, he's got that Bobby Heenan style torso, like that one shoulder singlet strap. Got the red wrist tape on there, which is actually a nice touch. I think it stands out nice here. Now, one thing I don't like about the Jerry the King Lawler figures, especially the Elite 82 in this one, is the way they don't give him ball joints. He's got the pine cone style, so they really create this like diaper-like gap between his thighs that's a bit weird, but it's not the biggest deal. He does have the crowns going down the side. Got the crown on the boots. He does have like these Cody Rhodes-esque style boots, or the Drew McIntyre style boots there with the straps on the back. Pretty good there. He's got the white outsoles, which stand out nicely, but I don't know, man. The, the Jerry the King Lawler's not bad, but I would say, you know, it's got that Bobby Heenan mold to it, and it's not bad. I think it represents the character where I just don't like how it creates that gap right there, but I guess it kind of creates like a natural stance for Jerry over there, so I don't know, but the head sculpt looks good. I like the haircut and everything like that, but as far as accessories, he does come with his interchangeable mic holding hands, of course, and then his other interchangeable hands are a pair of fists so he can beat up people. He also comes with his rubber jacket, or straight jacket, if you will. It's got some nice sculpts on it and different things. got some buttons and ribbons and things going on with it, but these jackets just need to be left behind behind, man. I mean, their, their time is come and gone. We've seen it enough. I don't think anybody really wants this. I think that, you know, it can, I guess it can add to a figure, and I know it. they, they don't really want to add to a certain degree, to a certain extent, to I'm just rambling on, trying to think of what the hell I'm trying to say. Like, I get, they're trying to make it where the figure's not bare, but they're giving you something, even though they can't throw in the full shebang. But I don't know, man. I just don't like them. I just take them all. I can't stand them, so... You know, if I can't pose a figure around, what I need it for? You know, I just buy a statue. Now, he also comes with his crown. Now, this is pretty nice. I mean, it's not Jimmy King worthy, but it's pretty damn good. It's got the jewels in there. It's got a nice sculpt to it. It actually hugs the figure and, uh, you know, sits on the figure's head. We take Jerry right here. I just love the name Jerry. I just think it's a great, you know, name. It just rolls off the tongue there. But look at that right there. That fits on pretty good there. Pretty nice and snug. So, yeah, there's your crown. And then he also comes with interchangeable, you know, elbow pads, which I guess are removable. Not interchangeable, but I guess they are interchangeable but you get the point. And then Jerry the King Waller also comes with this new Build-A-Figure torso for the British Bulldog, which is very nice. It's very similar to older torsos, but it's not quite there. It is a newer torso, so this is a nice sculpt. I like this a lot. I think it could fit with some nice people and uh, just really gets the job done for that physique of the British Bulldog. Next up, guys, is the Charlotte Flair from this set. Now, we do get a new head sculpt. To me, it's not really a new head sculpt, but it's more of just a new hair sculpt. And this looks very similar to the Elite 92 Charlotte, which is a solid Charlotte. I mean, arguably, that Charlotte the Elite 92, the Ultimate Edition, and this Charlotte are the uh, best Charlotte figures of all time. I know this one's not nearly the presence of the Ultimate Edition or, or you know, it's not as colorful as the Elite 92 or anything like that, but without her robe, I mean, she's kind of basic. In this, I mean, this is just a plain black attire. You don't get a whole lot going on right here. I mean, I know this is probably what the gear looked like and I guarantee it didn't. I'm sure, like, all this stuff on the front here was probably it's probably studded and had some bedazzled on it and it had, like, jewels and different shimmery stuff, probably some glitter iridescence and stuff going on with it, which would probably bring it to life, but she does have her collar coming down right here. The hair sculpt's pretty nice, you know, like all this braids and stuff right here in the front look really, really good. I think they did a pretty damn good job on here. Hair's nice and long, got the blonde hair in there, double jointed arms. She's got her tattoos here on the ribs. She's got her, okay. Are you kidding me, Brad? Isn't this supposed to be a cross? It's supposed to be a cross on her ribs and they don't continue the tattoo. That's pretty, uh, that can't happen right there, man. Come on now. So the figure is already, like the attire's already not that 
great, and then you, you come in here and you shortcome the, the freaking tattoo. Unless this is how this looks, which I could be wrong, and it could, but I don't know about that one. And then you do have, like, no sculpt down here. It's just plain black, and then you have these little swirls right here, and then they go all the way around. So it's not the most exciting attire again, like I said, but she has her standard black knee pads on there and standard black boots with her Charlotte Flair logos on there in the CF, and they are the Ultimate Edition boots, so you do get those Ultimate Edition boots that we saw on the Charlotte figure originally in her Ultimate Edition, and then, you know, Bianca Belair got them and stuff like that. I mean, it's an okay Charlotte figure. I don't think it's going to set the world on fire or anything like that, but, you know, it's got some good posability and stuff. Uh, I hate these knee pads, though. Damn, I hate these knee pads. I feel like yesterday I was reviewing the Elite 92 Charlotte, and that's what I feel like I'm holding. And, I mean, like, in these pay-per-view Build-A-Figure sets, it's usually a repaint. That's what these, like, waves are meant for, because they don't have to commit a huge amount of budget or anything like that. Like, you'll get a new head sculpt, you'll get a new thing here and there, but it main, it mainly these waves are made for, like, repaints and getting other, like, repeats of the same character out there. And it's not every single time, but I feel like that's kind of the norm. Now, for interchangeable hands accessories, she does have her entrance hands here that do include her nail polish in blue, which I think is a nice touch. I think it gets the job done, and these are nicely sculpted and everything like that. And she also comes with mic holding hands as her interchangeable other hands. And then outside of that, we do get a SmackDown Women's Championship, which is the same size as the Becky Lynch one. You guys can see it's the shrunk down version. Now, my title's a bit warped here. You guys can see the main white strap is a little about out-centered, and then the main plate's a little bit out-centered. You guys can see it needs to be, like, straightened up a little bit right there, but I don't know. I'm not gonna, like, cr you know, just crash a plane over it, but it's still, you know, it's worth mentioning, but the paint apps on the title better are pretty damn good. Now, Charlotte comes with the legs of the British Bulldog, and these legs look freaking fantastic. This looks like a customized pair of dry brush jeans you'd find around the, like, custom WWE figure community. I mean, dude, look at these damn jeans, man. Holy crap at the detail. They did a fantastic job on these. The sculpts look all good. They are pinless. Got all these different wrinkles and boots. I mean, I feel like I just stepped inside the 90s looking at these. I mean, they're not as light as possible, but these look like jeans, you know what I'm saying? And look at all the different details coming down. You got the belt in there. He's got the socks sculpted in there or painted in there with the boots. These look incredible, man. They did a great job on these. And I know these aren't necessarily an accessory, but I know a lot of people are going to be using these legs to make customs of other people using these Build-A-Figure legs. I can already see it. You know, a lot of people are talking about Virgil, like an NWO version, different things of that nature. I mean, there's so many people you can make using these legs as base. I mean, there's so many guys that come to mind. So, I mean, that's just up to your own adventure. All right, man, and now we have the star of the show, which is the Shawn Michaels figure, man. And I have, like, a lot of mixed emotions about this figure. I really, like, I like the figure, but I, of course, do have all my weirdness about the figure that I don't like. And I, I, we're gonna adventure down the planes as we will. Like, I just said that commonly, like, everybody says that, and it's just a thing that everyone says, which is just completely idiotic. But as we look here, man, this head sculpt is not feeling it for me. I don't like the likeness here. It has a real fan takeover Ultimate Edition Shawn Michaels thing going where it's this smirk that just doesn't look like Shawn Michaels. Like, it's not horrific, but it just is it. This doesn't look like Shawn Michaels. I don't look at this head sculpt and go, oh yeah, that's Shawn Michaels, all right. That's the guy I know. Like, no, I mean, the, the haircut is there, but I don't know, man. It's not like a bad hair sculpt and whatnot. I just don't like it. I, I feel like Jax did better as far as the likeness is concerned. So I definitely don't like the head sculpt. Uh, yeah, I'm just not a fan. I'm gonna figure out a way to fix this on surgery somehow. Whether we gotta do a hair, so I don't know what we're gonna do, but we're gonna do something about it. I just don't know what it is just yet, but we're, we're gonna cross that bridge eventually. But going down to the torso, it is your same standard, you know, uh, Shawn Michaels stuff going on, double jointed arms, which is a great formula here as far as torso. I think this torso actually works for Shawn. I don't think it needs to be any bigger. I mean, Sin Cara torso in his skin tone with the chest hair and the stomach hair, similar to an AJ Styles situation, maybe it would look really good. I've never seen it. I've never seen it done. I've never, you know, adventured down that lane, but I think that it could be a thing that could work good. You know, it just kind of, those guys that are in medium build, I think would do it wonders for. I just don't really like this torso for anybody, to be honest, but for Shawn Michaels, it doesn't rile me up as much, but I think that a Sin Cara torso or a, a newer, I guess I could call it the new AJ Styles torso, that could work for, for Shawn Michaels, but here we do have the unfinished gear, the iconic unfinished gear here, and I will be real. There's too much green in this brown. I don't think the brown's necessarily accurate, but I'd rather it be a shade of brown, like any color brown, than plain black like we saw back at San Diego Comic-Con, but the, the decals here in the light blue and silver, I'd love to know what this gear was supposed to look like, because honestly, even if the gear was complete, I don't think it would be that bad, but I think it just adds to the entire moment of it being unfinished and whatnot, but what's wild about this figure is they gave him edge legs, and I think that is so weird, and I think the re I can say the reason, I know why they did this, but I still don't know why they did this. Like, here, if you look at 
at the thighs. It doesn't look as bad, but these are edge legs, which means he is not on ball joints. So this is like the only Shawn Michaels figure ever. I could be wrong. There may be another one, like maybe the Retro Fest GameStop exclusive, and then probably like that Legends 2-pack Rockers version with Marty Jannetty. I think those are the only two Shawn Michaels of the past that didn't have ball joints, but I think every other Shawn Michaels has ball joints. Not holding my breath on that, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. They gave him these edge legs because the kick pads uh, leg mold is not necessarily long enough. So had they gone with the standard Shawn Michaels legs that they usually use or that they've used in the past, which is, this is all just weird. Let me just show you some examples. All right, so I did forget about one Shawn Michaels not being on ball joints, and there could be a couple more, but we're going to dive into the lore of the different Shawn Michaels projects right here, and we'll dive back into the details of the Shawn Michaels Elite here in a minute, and we'll zoom in on the boots and showcase that, but I just want to take you through this entire formula thought-out process right here, just because it's kind of crazy how we've arrived here, and we're going to dive into all the different things, so, and I'm going to explain why it's just kind of weird and it, just all the different thoughts. Just bear with me here. Originally, now, I want to say, like, the Elite 19 Shawn Michaels in the black and silver, I want to say it's... It's on ball joints. Yeah, I want to say it's on ball joints. I could be wrong about that, but I want to say that it is on ball joints. So if that is true, I don't know why they would put this figure not on ball joints. Like this one's on pine cone, the pine cone style joints. And then this one is on ball joints. So they reverted back to the ball joints over here. So this figure is on ball joints. Like you could, you could heat this up and take these off. This figure, however, is not on ball joints. So you cannot heat this up. You couldn't heat the crotch up and take these legs off. It would not work. However, you could do so with this one. Now, the reason why that's important is because a lot of of Shawn Michaels elites are like this one in which they have ball joints. Well, they used to use this skinny leg formula. It's the same skinny leg formula they use for, for Seth Rollins and some other characters. Okay, well fast forward to this new Legends Shawn Michaels and they kept the ball joints but they gave him an upgraded bigger leg. So they did upgrade his legs. So if you look at these leg molds right here, I want to say these are different. Now they may look very similar but I'm pretty sure these are slightly bigger or the upper thigh piece or something is different about these legs. They're they're not as short as these over here. You guys can even see that this figure is slightly taller. I don't know what they did, but this figure right here, I want to say, is just a hair taller than this one over here. So then you would ask yourself, why not use the most recent Shawn Michaels figure to establish a baseline for this figure right here? And the reason they didn't is because he's wearing cowboy boots. And if you guys weren't aware, cowboy boots are going to be shorter than the kick pad boots normally are. Now, we discussed this in our video breaking down the render images back in the day. I remember saying, I remember discussing this when when we were talking about the render image, I said, dude, those kick pad, like the cowboy boots you were wearing were like pretty much standard boots. They were not long like kick pads. They're going to look really weird if you just elongate the cowboy boot. Now, I will say they still kind of did elongate the cowboy boot. Like it still looks elongated, but it's not too, too trash. But they gave him edge legs to make the legs slightly longer. And then these cowboy boots will fit in there. And then the difference in between will shorten him to where he will be the same height as the rest of these Shawn Michaels figures. So if you guys look at these two leg molds, you have the Shawn Michaels, and then you have the Edge over here. These are the exact same leg mold. However, the Edge is taller. Why? Because the cowboy boots are not as tall as the regular Edge kick pad style boots. So they lower his height, the difference, which is a good thing because if they would have elongated the cowboy boots, HBK would have been too tall and it would have looked stupid. But I think that could have been avoided if they would just given this man the standard Shawn Michaels formula and then switch the lower legs out for something else. Like these things are on pegs. I don't know why you can't just switch out the lower legs for some Christian lower legs or some sort of standard boot lower legs, man. I mean, like, it could be anybody. There's so many different people that it could be. I mean, like, the Sin Cara calves or anybody with, like, those standard boots. Hell, this is the perfect opportunity for Johnny Gargano syndrome leg. Give him the Johnny Gargano syndrome legs and then stick some cowboy boots up in there and it would. I think it would have worked. I mean, we're gonna look into it and, like, I don't know what figures out there are brown. Like, I think Mankind's, like, the only one that would work, but we're gonna die. We're gonna actually adventure into this. We're gonna see what we can do here. And I still feel like the boots are too long. I mean, I don't know. Like, they may just look a little bit long because of this little end cap they got right here on the kick pad. But maybe, uh, when we put this into a standard leg and this is just even with the, you know, with the tights and this is just regular tights, I think it may fix it and it may look a little bit better because I think this is just a standard boot mold, like a Cactus Jack or a Hulk Hogan style boot mold. So I'll have to see. But the coloration and everything, the details on the boots look really good. I mean, it looks like standard boots. I mean, I'm from Alabama, man. People be wearing these things every damn day. So, you know, there's 
there's that. But yeah, that's the rigmarole lore of the Shawn Michaels. But all those things said, I still enjoy the figure and the posability is not bad. It also, I mean, like it hinder, it's going to hinder some of the things you can do because he is on pine cone joints. Like he's not on ball joints, but I'm not finding a terrible job with the articulation. Like he still moves around pretty good. So there's that. But yeah, that's the crazy, you know, just in-depth thinking of, of this figure. But we're going to see what we can do about it. And then for Shawn Michaels accessories, he does come with the World Heavyweight Championship or the Big Gold, which looks really good. So I'm always happy to add one of these to the collection. And the jewels don't look overly big. This actually looks pretty good. And then outside of Mike holding hands, he also comes with, you know, fisted hands, which they look pretty good. You got the white tape and then the little finger tape in there. And then he also comes with the British Bulldogs arms for the Build-A-Figure that just have standard white tape. You see these arms right here, man? Like this, this is the cut arms I'm talking about. Like they, they make Kevin Owens a little bit bigger than this, but they're still cut. And I just don't think it works for Kevin Owens. But yeah, this is the arms you get with the Shawn Michaels. All right, man. So after that entire lifelong lesson about HBK, let's dive into the British Bulldog, but we do have to build this. Now, Kevin Owens does come with the head of the British Bulldog. Jerry the King Lawler comes with the torso. Charlotte comes with the legs. And HBK does come with the arms. Now, I think it's a good business decision to put Charlotte with the legs because her sales are probably going to be lower than the rest of them. And so they did pair the legs with her because they know that people are going to be buying multiple legs. Sounds like a good business plan for me. But nonetheless, man, let's take our legs here and connect them to the torso right there and just kind of smash that together. Damn, that's crispy. That's pretty damn nice right there, man. Holy crap. They did a really good job on that, man. That's tight waist. I don't know about pretty face, you know what I'm saying? But we're going to take this, plug that in there. Damn, that's a good fit, man. Dude, they need to make all figures like this. And maybe that's where they're headed, like, you know, in the future. But, okay, don't don't do this to me. I just, I just said your right arm was damn good. Your left arm was perfect. Now what are you doing to me? Are you shitting me? Like, holy shit. Dude, I can't get this freaking arm in. Oh my god in heaven. Like, what is this? The more I look at it, man, I don't think this is supposed to look like this. Like, there's no... Like, I don't think it's supposed to look like this, man. Look at that. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. I think it's supposed to look like this. Am I tripping? It's supposed to look like that. Did I get a defective-ass piece? Come on, man. Well, I don't know what to do with that. Unless it fell out somewhere. Like, I don't know. F it. One-armed British Bulldog. Here we come. Shit's gonna look hilarious in the thumbnail. I mean, what what are we doing? This is such a nice figure, too. Like, really, like, a, truly, truly a great figure. Like, feels really good. Represents the character very well. This makes me look forward to build a figure so nicely. Like, every other piece goes in super smooth. Yeah, I think I'm missing a piece, man. I think I am missing a piece, unless it's just ridiculous, but uh, this torso looks really good. The head sculpt looks phenomenal. I'm, I'm really digging the legs here, like we talked about, like the dry brushing and the detail. I'm still not really a fan of pinless legs. I just feel like they're so, like they look clean, but damn, they're stiff. They're just always stiff, and that really bothers me, but the figure looks really pristine. I like all the things going on with this figure. He's got a block head. I mean, dude, it, this is looking pretty good to me. I cannot believe this freaking arm, man. I mean, will it even just sit in there for a photo? I don't know, man. I, it's definitely missing a piece though i mean there's no way there's just no freaking way that is crazy man god dang it but there's our british bull i mean it's a very good figure man it looks just like the character i think they did a really good job on this i am again i'm looking forward to all of our build figures now because this is so pristine again the pinless legs like very tight but you know nonetheless it's still a really good figure and i like the way it looks and everything i just wish my damn arm would pop on but i don't know if i'm gonna leave his arm off in the thumbnail or not but it would be funny but uh with all this being said man let's go ahead and rank these figures from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, of course, you guys know how the criteria works for these things. You know what it comes down to. It comes down to excitement level for the figure, how the figure represents the character on TV, posability, fill in hand, likeness, all these different things come into play. But let's go ahead and rank these figures, man. Coming out at the bottom of our ranking, let's go ahead and adjust this a little. It's going to be the Charlotte Flair figure. Nothing against Charlotte. I just think that it's not enough different from her Elite 92. I, I just feel like it comes out a bit flat. And it's not a bad figure per se, but I just think it's my least favorite of this entire set. And I like the addition of the double jointed or like the ultimate edition boots we've seen that quite a few times now but just the lack of the attire there's no robe there's it, just different things about it i just can't put it any higher than this coming in at the number four spot is actually going to be jerry the king lawler again not you know not the worst figure of all time i just still think it's serviceable but he comes with that rubber jacket it it you know not my favorite character of all time again i have no tie to it or anything like that now if i was doing like a big wwf attitude era style display and i was going to put him on commentary that would look really really good and I think that if you were to customize a Jim Ross, maybe the unrivaled Jim Ross and put him up next to you there and like customize him and make him fit into an old Jack's playset. Now then you're really working with some peanut oil there. That really fires me up. I think that could be really sick. And even if you're not doing that, I still think it's a serviceable figure. It's just compared to the rest of the set, that's where I feel. Coming in at number three, I'm going with my man Kevin Owens. Love Kevin Owens. Love this figure. I still think the arms are too big, but it's a solid repaint of a really good existing figure. Like his original figure of this mold is really, really good. And it's, I 
love it to death, and I love Kevin Owens, so that helps me a lot, but, you know, not a ton of meat on the bone there. I still think the arms are too big. However, it is a really good Kevin Owens figure. Coming at number two, we do have armless British Bulldog here. You know, say what you will, really good. I hate how stiff the legs are, but as this first Build-A-Figure of this new era, really love the pants, like the way the figure feels, really tight and things of that nature, really good head sculpt, lots of great things about it, but coming in at number one, despite all the weirdness, despite the head sculpt, all those things, this is a figure I've been asking Mattel for for a really long time, and they delivered it, even if it's not the best and the best execution, I still really like the Shawn Michaels, and I think I'd rather have it rather than every other figure in this set, so that's kind of my ranking there on all of these, man. That is my full ranking, you know, we're gonna take some of these guys to surgery, see what we can figure out. Uh, if you own this British Bulldog, did, did a part fall out? Am I missing a piece? Am I insane, man? Like, let me know all those things down below, of course, but that is gonna wrap up our Survivor Series Elite Figure Review. I feel like I've been here an hour discussing all these things, but sometimes it, it rolls that way, but that is gonna wrap up the video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts on this full wave down in the comment section below. If you will, if you watch this video to this point, please leave me a like. I would greatly appreciate it, man. Try to get this video to 300 plus likes if we can. Shoot. Shoot for the moon, man. Let's go for 500 likes if you watch the video this far. If it's not at 500, leave a like there. Greatly appreciate that, man, but that is gonna wrap up the video. A huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate and love those guys so very much for all of their continued support on the channel. Always love and appreciate you for everything you guys do for me. Thank you guys so very much for watching the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts on these things down below. Leave a like on the video and I will catch you guys later. Have a blessed one and I'll see you later. <laughs>